Yesterday I came here to the docks uh, at uh, San Francisco to visit the submarine behind me, the USS Pampanito. And today I'm going to visit another Navy ship and this one is a lot bigger. And this will be the first time I actually step on board a Liberty ship. That one. Looking at the last of the Liberty ships, the Liberty was a workhorse of World War II. We built over 2,710 of these ships. We've only two left, this one and one other one in Baltimore. But this one, the Jerry O'Brien, the Lucky O'Brien, was there for the D-Day invasion, June 44. She was there for over three months on the beaches of Normandy, going back and forth between France and England, supplying the troops with whatever they needed. She was a cargo ship, as you can see. During the dark days of World War II, the SS Jeremiah O'Brien and her sisters served as the primary cargo vessels for the U.S. and the Allies. Without the vital cargo they delivered, victory would have been impossible. Alas, of the 2,710 Liberty ships, only two are still operational today. Assembled in 56 days, the O'Brien stands as a living memorial to all those who served overseas and on the home front during World War II. By mid-1940, Great Britain stood alone against Nazi Germany. The besieged island was almost completely reliant on supplies delivered by cargo ships. The Germans sought to exploit this weakness by sending hordes of U-boats to sever Great Britain's lifeline. U-boats began exacting a terrible toll on the British merchant fleet. Ships were being destroyed faster than they could be replaced. In their hour of need, Great Britain turned to the United States to supply cargo vessels. Using pioneering construction methods such as prefabrication and welding, the United States began mass producing ships on a scale never seen before or since. Working around the clock, 18 shipyards across the United States began assembling Liberty ships. The O'Brien story begins in a shipyard in South Portland, Maine in mid-1943. Assembled in just 56 days, she is a veteran of both the Atlantic and Pacific theaters of war. Her wartime exploits include seven voyages, four transatlantic crossings, one down to South America and two in the Pacific. But her greatest assignment was supplying the beaches of Normandy during the D-Day invasion. The O'Brien made 11 shuttle missions between June and September 1944, delivering supplies for the Allies to prosecute the war against Nazi Germany. At the conclusion of the war, the O'Brien found herself in Australia. Her final wartime assignment would see her transporting her most precious cargo of all. The O'Brien transported nine Australian war brides and three children to San Francisco to start their new lives in America. While these young women were starting their new lives, the O'Brien faced an uncertain future. Placed into the reserve fleet in 1946, she would sit quietly waiting for an assignment or for her breakers. In the 1960s, a plan was conceived to save a Liberty ship. The O'Brien was selected and in 1979 left the mothball fleet to sail again. Through the 1980s, she cruised around San Francisco Bay on a regular basis and was open to the public as a museum. Little did she know that the greatest feat was still to come. On June 6, 1994, the O'Brien was off the coast of France at Point du Hoc to commemorate the 50th anniversary of D-Day. The average age of the crew was 70 years old. Today, the O'Brien still regularly cruises and serves as a museum dedicated to preserving and teaching the history of Liberty ships and their contribution to World War II. The volunteer crew of the O'Brien is very proud of their ship, her history and her legacy. Without their dedication and their supporters, it would not be possible to preserve this beautiful old gal for future generations. I strongly recommend that if you are interested in maritime history, visit the ship. Wow, that was an amazing ship with a fascinating history to go with it. It was now time to go find a feast at Pier 39. 
I sat down at Pier Market, ordered a glass of wine and a lobster feast with garlic cheese french fries. Amazing.